Praise the Lord. Hey, young Metro. Stand your feet for a minute. I just, just want to take a moment just to really, and I do this a lot in services. I preach all over the world. But just to, we go through our announcements. You know, when we're in worship, we're in a mindfulness of, of being in our heart space, of receiving in our heart you know like we it, it, worship is an exchange and then what happens sometimes we can do announcements and we get up back up in our head right and so why don't we just shut our eyes just for a moment and just open up your heart repeat after me say Lord Jesus I open up my heart to you today let it be fertile soil let the word of the Lord come to me and land on good soil, that it might bring forth a 30, 60, 90 fold return. Father, I commit myself to you. I open my ears. I'm attentive to your word this morning, and I receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and take your seats. Um, also, what I always, always like to do when I preach, as I said, I do, I'm an evangelist, so I do crusades. I go into outlaw motorcycle clubhouses to build relationship. I've seen many sergeant at arms and high members of high ranking members of outlaw motorcycle clubs give their lives to Jesus and, and uh, from, the, from the natives and headhunters in Papua New Guinea. Uh, to, to Outback Australia, to, you know, just basically wherever the Lord wants to send me because I'm just crazy too. I took, but actually into Mexico to the Mexican drug cartel. Um, every time I'm in, in America, in Texas, I go down there and, 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 and preach down there. So I'm, I, I, I'm like, I'm like what, what would you call like a, almost like a Christian outlaw, so to speak, you know, in regards to God creates certain people that are, that are warriors. And... Um, and, and I would say that I, I tried the whole thing of being a pastor to a church and um, each week I reckon I emptied half the church because um, they'd all get a bit, little bit scared and, and uh, you know, some, some people were in, in our church are here. And, uh, but, you know, like because cause I'm, not, I'm not one of these, these level smooth guys like Pastor Gary. I'm like, I'm like this up and down erratic all over the place. And so, you know, <laughs> I remember Pastor Leone, who now runs Kids Church, she, she feels so much safer now, you know, uh, because she would be like, I just, I just can't keep, I just, it's messing with my head, I can't keep up with you. And so anyway, so there's people created with different graces to do different things. And, and thank God I've worked out what I'm meant to be doing now. And that's, that's traveling the world and stirring people up um, to passion about the presence of God, passion about putting God first, and, and of course, a passion for souls. But I want to talk to you today. It's, it's my incredible honour to be able to minister here for my good friend, Pastor Gary McDonald, who has been um, an incredible mentor for me. When I first uh, got born again, uh, there was two people that really impacted my lives. One was Pastor Gary Mack, another one was a guy by the name of John Edwards, and for different reasons, you know, um, John Edwards was, was a missionary and he, was, he would just, like, you know, the scripture says, wind blows where it pleases. And, uh, and that, that was him, you know, like he was led by the Spirit and just did whatever. And then, then there was Pastor Gary who was this, this incredible, stable influence. And every time I was around Pastor Gary, my life would increase. Are you hearing me? So what would happen is, it's not that I am ever going to be like Pastor Gary. Right. In fact, it's such a, an incredible dichotomy, our relationship, and, and that's what God does, you know. And, and we're, as iron sharpens iron, I want to encourage you, don't just hang around the same like-minded people. Get around different people because as iron sharpens iron, rub off on each other. And, uh, and, but, but when I would get around him, it was definitely, there was something of an anointing. Everybody say the anointing. See, it's that the anointing is something that you can't, tangibly see you so often you can feel the anointing there's a there's a feeling of the anointing but you can see the effects of the anointing that's how Jesus described it in John chapter 4 he said he said the wind you see the effects of the wind 
You don't know where it comes from, where it's going, but you see the effects of the wind. And when the anointing that was on Pastor Gary, Gary's life would get onto me, it would make me better at everything I did. Because of the, the, the thing that's on his life and the calling that is upon his life. And I found that when we, when we came into Metro Church, it was exactly the same thing, that this, this anointing was on the house because it come from the leader about making everything better in my life. I would get these promotions. I would get these people looking at me differently to even how I viewed myself. Are you hearing me? See, the, the word grace it means unmerited favour. And we can talk about grace, 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 grace. And a lot of people don't really understand the outworking of the grace of God in your life. Because the outworking of the grace of God in your life should look like that you got promotion you didn't deserve. You got blessing without working for it. You, everything was not by the sweat of your brow as happened in the garden, but it's, it's actually just because God favours you. It's not because your boss favours you. Hello. It's not because you, the company favours you. It's not because the shop owner favours you. It's not because of anything else, but because God just favours you. Just like Joseph. Good story of the favour of God. Because it wasn't about Joseph, was it? It was about what was upon his life. And I'm telling you right now, if you get connected, and we all know there's different levels of connection, we can, we can stay out here and we can watch from a distance. And you know, uh, this is what happens in church. A lot of people will stand outside and sometimes they'll come further in and they'll come further in. I heard... Pastor Gary talking about the offering. See, I can talk about this because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to preach every week and I'm, I, I come and I go and you know, I'm going to be at different churches. But you know, I can share this, that I believe that this is true, that when people come into a church, they come, then their money comes later. Yeah. And when people leave a church, their money leaves first, then they leave later. Yeah. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And I'm telling you right now that if, you, if, if, if you're going to be in this house, we need to be talking one language. We need to be adopting unity because the Bible says in Psalm 133 that where there is unity, the Lord commands there a blessing. It says even life forevermore, everlasting life, which talks of salvation, people getting saved. You see, if this... If this group of people, and this is what I'm, I'm getting to this morning, is that God wants unity amongst this group of people that we would all talk one language. Because where there's unity, and, and, and when we look at Psalm, we look at, that's not my scripture, but when we look into Psalm 133, it says that it's like the precious oil that comes down upon Aaron, the priest, or the man of God, the, the head of the house, the father of the house, that anointing comes on the head down through the beard and right down to the end of the garments, the body of Christ, right down to the end of the end of the body of Christ and the church. And so the, the encouragement to us to become unified is that that anointing that comes upon Aaron or Pastor Gary comes down into our lives and it, the outworking of it is completely unmerited favour complete blessing God wants to give you things that you never worked for he wants to he wants to clear debts credit card debts in fact I have I have seen this happen there is there's different graces on different houses and there's a grace upon my my friend pastor Kevin in in Kevin Ortiz in in Texas he's got this grace upon his house where he has seen over 1.8 million dollars of debt cancellation within the people of his church because of this anointing that he has upon, upon him and being obedient to that and laying hands on people and seeing miraculous credit card debt disappear. Now, I'm not negating being a good steward of your finances or all, anything like that, but if God can clear your sin, how much more can he clear the other debts in your life? If... if if, if God freely gave you Jesus, will he not freely give you all things? 
And so what I want to say to you today is that if we stand together in unity, see, there's many voices and there's different things that are going to come at you in life. And that's why I've got this thing up the back here, right? Over there, nowhere, far away, somewhere, not sure, no idea, uncertain, don't know, distant. The more voices that are in your head, the more confusion will take place. Uh, it's, it's interesting because, you know, when I ask the Lord what, what to share, well, Pastor Gary actually asked me to share this morning, and knowing that this is precursing Vision Sunday. And I'm not, I'm not sharing with you what the vision is because I don't know, it's on him. God's going to download it to him, right? And he's going to share with you where the Lord is taking us as a people, as Metro, into the new season of blessing. One thing I do know is that it will, it will be a season of multiplication and blessing. And I said, God, what do you want me to talk about? And I said, and he said, I want you to talk about one language, one vision, one people. Now, and then what I did, you know, how many of you get the Bible on your phone and what comes up is like a, a word of the day, scripture for today. This is what came up yesterday. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that's the one that will stand. The Lord's counsel. One thing that I've, I've worked out in my life, and my wife and I have pretty much lived by faith for about 16 years. I started the Ministry of Transformations out of a little house next door to uh, what was called Surf City Church at the time, and a little house next door, and, uh, and then, but I was working full time. And, um, and then when I stepped out into ministry, I had no income to step out into. And God said to me, um, he said to me, I want you to step out on the water, son. And how many know that's scary? You, and often what happens, you know, like Abraham, you start thinking of an Ishmael, some kind of backup plan. And, you know, the banks actually gave me an Ishmael plan called a credit card. <laughs> and so I had this credit card and, you know, because some weeks you just can't, and it wasn't like scary, you know, splashing out on shopping. We just charged the groceries on the credit card or something. Anyway, while we're believing God, my wife and I, for an income, we, we clocked up a, a $10,000 credit card debt. And, and it was just getting scary and we're thinking maybe I need to go back to work. Maybe I need to, you know, what, what's going on here, Lord? And then I was just soaking in the presence of God one night and I saw God's love sweep across my credit card statement and leave a zero balance. I was just soaking, just worshipping, just delighting myself in Him just rising far above my circumstances and just being on a heavenly cloud and just saying, God, I love you. Not God, I need something. Not God, I want something. Just God, I love you. And then I just see this vision, whoosh, leaving a zero balance. So I race home and I, I wake my wife up and, and I, I'm like, Corinne, guess what? She says, what, what, what? And, and I said, God's going to wipe out our credit card debt and leave a zero balance. I saw it in a vision. She goes, what? You woke me up for that? Well, we've still got to, you know, work on it. You know, wives are the practical ones. And anyway, for us it was in our household. Anyway, so I'm like, no, God's going to do it. And, and, um, and a couple of weeks later, this business guy came into our building where we were having our offices and stuff and and he's, he said, where's, where's Pastor Mike Barrett? Where's Pastor Mike Barrett? And someone led him to me. And then they, they, he, said, he said, walked up to me and he said this. He said, God's told me that you've got a debt that I've got to take care of. And I'm like, what? So he said, God, God's got a, a debt. Oh, no, God, you've got a debt. God said, I've got to. God's got no debt. You've got a debt that I've got to wipe. And I said, are you kidding me? He said, try me. And I said, it's $10,000. And to add it, I said, it's a credit card debt too, because I know business guys, they don't believe in that. You know, like they're like, well, you got yourself into the trouble, get yourself out. 
And, and he said, done. And he signed a check for $10,000. And he said, why did you get yourself into this place? And I said, well, because I don't have a wage. I'm believing God. And he said, well, now you do. I'm gonna... And that was our first wage, $300 a week. And we've lived from faith to faith because what we did is we put God's ways and purposes and kingdom before ours. One of the, one of the founding scriptures of my life, the thing that really just rocked my world was Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything that the pagans run after shall be added unto you. Don't worry about what you'll eat, what you wear, where you live. If you seek first God's kingdom, God's ways, and I've heard it said another way, if you build God's house, he'll build yours. But see, it's a challenge and as I step out on the water, I'm like, wow, wow. Like Peter, you start to doubt. But it's incredible what God says. God says, who made the boat and who made the water? Because if you can trust him and you can put him first, then you will be speaking the same language. Let me show you. So first scripture I want to share is um, out of Genesis chapter 11, verses 6 to 7. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one. They all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. How many of you know where that's from? The Tower of Babel. That's right, Jordan. The Tower of Babel. So it's where we get the word babbling from, right? So the Tower of Babel, these people had decided they wanted to build a tower and because they were so unified, they spoke in one language and one speech. And the way that the Lord confused their plans is by going down and dividing their languages, dividing their speech. And the enemy uses this in the church. See, there's nothing new under the sun and the enemy will use tactics like this to get the church speaking different languages. Now we track forward to the New Testament in Acts chapter 2. We see that God reverses the process and God's answer is to give the church one language. It says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, when they were, they were all of one accord, so they were already in unity. So unity comes first. And then the Lord commanded the blessing. Out come fire from heaven. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. And one sat on each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under the sun. And when they, this sound, this sound, this sound, do you hear that? When this sound come, there is one sound that comes out of Metro Church. One sound. And if we can get the sound that comes out of this place, then we will be an ultimate voice into the community, into the Gold Coast and into every little sphere of influence that you're in. And the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed. Often what happens when the favour of God and you're speaking the favour of God and God see and other people see the favour of God on your life, they will first of all be confused. Because they'll look at you and they'll go, how did that person get this? How did that happen? But the next thing they'll do is they'll be amazed and they'll be marvelled, saying to one another, look, are all not these who speak Galileans? And how is it that they hear each, each in our own language in which we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and those dwelling in Mes- Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, uh, Persia, Phrygia, Pam, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya adjoining Serene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, 
Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues wonderful works of God. So they're all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that God, when he gets a group of people together, and there's different flavours in the body of Christ. And you are brought here, you're placed here because this is where God wants you to be a voice. One voice. And so it says here, what does it mean? What could this mean? It means that when the power of God comes upon the church and the presence of God, and when we're all seeking God, right? And we're not listening to all these voices in our head. All the different voices, well, maybe this and maybe that. Oh, I wonder what's happening here and I wonder what's happening there. Or maybe, maybe there's something else or maybe some, you know what? God purposely puts you in a place and puts blinkers on you so that you can have one vision. Then speak one voice because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what will happen is that what will build this house is unity in one language and what will divide the house is separate languages. You cannot build with separate languages. God knew that. That's why he confused the the Tower of Babel. What it means is that when we're seeking God's purpose, when we're seeking God's ways and we're hearing God's voice, we will be in line with what Pastor Gary is saying. Hello. We're not going to be in line with our own flesh. We're not going to be in line with our own ambitions. We're not going to be in line with our own needs even because we will trust that where we are going is going to be a place of favour. It's going to be a place of blessing. And if we build God's house, he'll build ours. Amen. I'm telling you, it works. Okay, I'm running out of time. Uh, Next one, Joshua 3, chapters 5 to 7, and uh, verses 5 to 7. And I just want to, I want to come to this main subject of what I feel like God is giving us as a step-by-step process even over this week. Often what kind of frustrates me about church life is that sometimes we can shuffle in, shuffle out like seaweed. We hear a message and, you know, the tide comes in, the tide goes out, what's left, you know, and and then then we, 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 you know, we hear a message that the rest of the week we do nothing with. Hello. Yeah? So I'm giving you some homework. Okay? Is that all right? Now, and, and I want to I wanna challenge you on this because if you're part of this house, be single-minded about being part of this house. Shut out all the other voices and go, you know what, I'm going to commit. Because one of, the, one of the worst places that anyone can ever be is the place of what's called ambivalence or double-mindedness. We see that with um, transformations and we're working with addictions and we're helping try to get people through change. And the word ambivalence means opposing forces over the one thing that you're trying to do. How many of you have tried to lose weight and you've got opposing voices over that thing? Yeah? Oh, I really would love to look skinny, but that chocolate would just taste so good. Hello. Or, or you're trying to give up smoking and, you know, I get all these people on the altar and I want to... Pray for me, pastor, that I can give up smoking. So you pray for them and they go, yeah, yeah, I receive, but I love it, I love it. Yeah, I want to give up smoking, but I love it, I love it. You know, like you can't live in those two places and it's the most uncomfortable feeling that you can ever have. So what I, what I say is that you've got to settle in your heart and be single-minded about where you're going. And, and in this house, we have to be single-minded and single-voiced about, I'm for Metro, I'm with Metro, I'm with Pastor Gary. You don't speak about my pastor negatively in any way. You don't speak about any leadership in any negative way because I'm going to cut it out because I'm heading where God, where God want Metro to be. Yeah, because God placed me here and God's going to lead me and no other voice is going to be in my way. Amen. Joshua. So this is what... 
This is the story, okay? So we know the children of Israel, they used to whinge and murmur and moan and carry on all the time. Moses had a difficult time pastoring the children of Israel. Hello. You know, 40-day fast, seeking the word of the Lord. I know that Pastor Gary's just been on a, a time of, of sanctifying himself. It says there, sanctify yourself, which simply, simply means, it, this, it's not some like, oh, I've got to be holy and I've got to, you know, it's set apart, right. right? To sanctify yourself means to set yourself apart for the purpose of seeking God, for the purpose of his use, right? If things were set apart, and Pastor Gary's preached on this. This was sanctified. No, this was not sanctified, and that was sanctified, or something like that, right? So one part was holy, one was not holy. And, you know, when we think of it in those terms, then it's obviously confusing, but it's about setting something apart for the use of the Master. Amen? We are the clay, and He is the potter. The moment the clay jumps off the wheel, it's useless. Okay? So, so we've got to, we've got to sanctify ourselves. And, and see, Moses sanctified himself. Self, he went up in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights without any food so he could get the direction for God's people, the Ten Commandments. How many know while he was away, they did some silly? Made a golden calf. And this is, what, this is what often can happen when there's a few people that murmur amongst the camp that go against what God wants to do. Poor Moses come down, lost, lost his marbles, threw the, threw the tablets on the ground and, and, and then of course the earth swallowed up all the people that were in rebellion. Now we start again, back up the mountain again, 40 days and 40 nights and, and then let's come down and let's try this again. But you know what, the people didn't stop there in, in testing Moses. And you know what, the only, there's nothing wrong with Moses' leadership, I can tell you that right now. Moses was an incredible leader one that found favour with God, one that talked face to face with God, one that understood that if we didn't carry God's presence, then we're not separate from other people. So many incredible things about Moses as he says, show me your glory on the mountaintop. He's just so hungry for God. But you know what? Uh, if there's any weakness that Moses had, he listened to the people too much. Yeah. Even God got sick of the people. He did. He said, oh, they're doing my head in. They want, they want meat. They want meat, 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 meat. Well, you know, what's wrong with the manna? They want meat. All right, I'm going to give them so much meat, it comes out of their nostrils. <laughs> it's a tough job being a pastor. And Moses, the one mistake that Moses made, why he didn't go into the promised land. God showed him it all, but he didn't get in there, was because he listened to the people and struck the rock twice. Didn't listen to God. Because God told him to strike it once. He never told him to strike it a second time. So anyone that gives Pastor Gary advice on how to run Metro, hello, just let him run it. Let He's the anointed leader. He's going to hear from God. Let's hear from God through that. Amen? All right. And this is how we do it, right? Because at the end of the day, you've got to seek God. You know, I, I, I'm no perfect you know, person in a congregation. In fact, a lot of the time I just get frustrated because I'm an evangelist, right? Evangelists are different. Pastors want to build fences. Evangelists want to kick them down, right? Pastors are like, you know, let's get all the sheep and let's make them say, it's, I heard this one said, it's like, as if the church was like an aeroplane, the pastor would be walking around making everybody comfortable. You've got a nice pillow. You, you know, you've got a drink. Is, is the air right down here? Is he, you, are you comfy? I want to make sure you're comfy. Meanwhile, the evangelists run away with parachutes going, hey, plane's going to crash. <laughs> so I can sit in a congregation, I can get frustrated. But one thing I do know is that, that, that I will never come against God's anointed. I sat in a church for 17 years and probably out, as I'm trying to grow up into my gifting, but I would never come against my pastor because he's the anointed one that God has chosen. I can't say he's doing it wrong. If I do, God will deal with me. Are you hearing me? It's scriptural. What Miriam said was right when she's talking about Moses. The fact that she said it was wrong and she was struck with leprosy. Now, I'm not saying anyone's going to get struck with leprosy. But I'm just saying there are principles in the word of God that we need to follow and speak one language. And that's what God is saying to this people for this time 
on where he wants to take us into blessing into the promised land. So this is what happened is that God spoke to Joshua and he said this, give the instructions to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Then Joshua spoke to the priests saying, take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. The Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. And so the favour of the Lord comes upon you guys and this is what, how all people know that you belong to Metro specifically. Now I say this is obviously something that God has for everyone but there is an, a special anointing because it is focused and harnessed in in this house. How many, how many know what I'm talking about, right? That, that when we believe God for something, I know when I travel overseas and I minister, people are looking for miracles. And because they're believing for healing, they take the hem of the garment, so to speak, and they get the miracle that they want, right? Because they believe, they, they know that when evangelist Mike Barrett comes to town, there's going to be miracles, or there's going to be a touch of God, or there's going to be something like that happen, right? And, and in this house, you have to speak that same language and go for the same thing of what is, is being downloaded from heaven for this house. They were all in one accord. On the day of Pentecost, they were seeking God's presence. And then God made their language as one. So often I've said to God, I don't agree with that. And God said, that's what I'm saying to this house. Or I don't like that. Or I don't feel like God's what, that's what God's saying to this house. And as you seek God, God will confirm to you what Pastor Gary's saying. I've found that many, many times when I sit in under an anointing, God will say, yep, that's right. Yep, that's right. And he confirms it. Okay, so sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. And I want to challenge you this week to take some time to set yourself apart and, and seek God about the vision that you have within the big vision. Are you hear me? Because this is not a dictatorship. God has brought you here so that your vision fits into Pastor Gary's vision, which fits into God's vision. You hear me? And so sanctify yourself, set yourself aside. And the second thing is it says that they put the ark of God before them, which is the presence of God. I want to challenge you this week to make God first in your day. Now I know we have seasons of this, but, and I'm not trying to be religious or anything, but I'm just saying, set aside, sanctify 10 minutes of the day, sanctify 15 minutes of the day, and do it first. Put God first. Put the presence of God before you so you know where you're going. Amen? And your day will be better anyway, so you see the benefits of it. But let's set ourselves aside and get ourselves ready and if you want to fast, you can fast. You can even just fast TV or fast whatever, you know, so that you can set aside times for God to seek him about what God's downloading. And then next week, we're going to hear the leading of the house and the vision of the house. Amen. Yeah. Um, let's all stand to our feet. I did good, Pastor Gary. I've got four minutes to spare. He said, he said to me, <laughs> I try and behave myself. I'm used to like preaching three, four hour sermons. So <clears throat> overseas, and it's like, you got 40 minutes. I said, for the intro? One language. Jesus said to his disciples, when he called the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and understand not what goes into a mouth defiles a person, but what comes out from his mouth defiles him. Those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. 
and they defile a person. For out of the heart can proceed evil thoughts, murders, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a person. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I love this house. I love Metro and all that it stands for and I love Pastor Gary. I feel like if you look up in the dictionary, honour, loyalty, I feel like this man emulates all of those characters of integrity of a man of God. Many times I've come to him to complain and whinge and moan and all he's done is speaking, spoken good over that person and, and, and said, yeah, but what about this and what about that? And like very hard for ever, him ever hear him speak a negative word over anyone. And this house is a house of blessing. It's a house of unmerited favour. And the closer you get to him and his leaders, the more you will see your life just begin to spring forth incredible blessing, incredible favour. And, like and it's just the anointing. It's not because you did anything. But it's, see, it's about the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. And even today, God is looking into your heart and saying, are there some things that you need to prioritise? Are there some things that you need to move out of the way? Because we've got to get our hearts right in order to speak the same language. Amen. And I want to ask us as a sign of faith, not because I need to see anybody, not because Pastor Gary needs to see anybody, but before God, how many of you in this house in 2020 will make a fresh commitment to the DNA, to the heartbeat, to the mission, to the culture, to the service of this house. As a sign that you want to do that, you want to commit to that, and you want to bring, come further and further in to what we're doing here at Metro. Just shoot up your hand. Just say, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of what is happening in this house. I want to be committed to this house. While hands are raised, I want to pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for unity. I pray for one voice in this place. I pray for one culture, one DNA of this house. I pray for an anointing of unity to come over this house, an anointing of loyalty, an anointing of honour, an anointing of respect, an anointing of wholehearted service. Father, do a work in men and women's hearts today, Lord by the power of your Holy Spirit. Even now, Lord, right into the depths of our heart. As we open it right up, Lord, I give you everything. All that I am, all that I will ever be, belongs to you, Jesus. We take it one step higher, Lord, and we say in 2020, God, we're yours. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we want your will, your purpose, your ways. Lord, please show off to the world through us by your presence, God. Thank you, Lord. And deal with the ambivalence of our heart, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this morning. Thank you for your presence. And Father, even right now, as everybody stands in your presence right now, let them take a big drink of your goodness.
<laughs> You're so good, Jesus. You're so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'll just pass back to Pastor Gary. God bless you, Metro.